anyway, let's let's kick off for the first round. So, uh, um, now let's see if we can get straight into the action for a change. It normally takes me a little bit to get warmed up, but we're going to dive immediately in. And I'll put the bishop here. Probably bishop b4 is a better move, but this position I know vastly. I know this probably this position better than anyone in the world. And the whole point of this line is to play this move. And once you get this move in, you're laughing. Now, already I quite like my position. Let's watch out for this kind of check, winning a pawn. So I'll bring the knight out. And we swing the queen over here. And I always like playing this move against that. His bishop is very bad. We've got some initiative on the king side. And he's also got maybe some potential problems here. So the opening has gone uh, very, very well. Someone saying Gormali is very good. Yeah, Gorm Gormali is bloody good. He's a really bloody good chess player. Um, I must admit, I mean, when I was... I knew Danny, I, I lived with him when I was a lot younger and some other, and I knew him very well. We used to go to tournaments together. And um, uh, I always thought he was a real talent, Danny. As in really, really could have been a 2600 plus player, but his nerves, unfortunately, uh, let him down a little bit. How's the sync now, Aldo? Is that, has that got better? Because you know what I'm like, I, I, I'm perfectionist. I and mean, if things have gone a bit wrong, then I'm like, I kind of have to sort it out. Okay, so, I mean, how's this turning out? Now, this pawn seems a little bit weak. How's he going to defend it, for example, if I put the bishop here? Because maybe he can't defend these these two weaknesses in the position. Um, looks very tough to do that, so might be might be grabbing a pawn here. Um, Uge... Ugo or, or whatever saying just I yeah I've got my if you follow me on Twitter um, and YouTube on my YouTube channel is a Twitter link to my Twitter my last post is about a, a podcast I did an interview with an old friend of mine actually Ben Johnson and um, well I mean uh, it's the state of English chess is is um, it's pretty bad I, I, I generally think uh, and I'm quite honest in my views, but I think if you want to know more about my some of my history and views, and that podcast is is out there. So I'm glad I'm glad you liked it. Thank you very much, Ugo Uge or whatever. I well, I don't know why I'm saying both your names are wrong when they are spelt the same. But so far this is going well. This is like um, quite a smooth Dutch, but um, not really sure what he's going to do now. He probably has to give this one up because he doesn't want to lose G3 as well. But this has been like clockwork Dutch. As, as I often, well, I say often get, I often get very good positions from the Dutch opening and I'm probably the world's leading expert in this, to be fair. Spe the classical Dutch, definitely, because I'm like the only lunatic and the only grandmaster lunatic who plays it. Um, so he has to do this, yeah, and I, I think we'll just grab this one. And, um, well, I mean, I don't need to do anything drastic let's get this in audio slightly ahead only a frame or two okay i, I i'm going to try changing it at some point um does this achieve anything or, or can we take here i think we get an ending maybe maybe i can take here with some ideas of pulling off an attack here or just simply uh, well, Let's not do that. Let's think about this move a little bit. Swapping key queens is probably very good. But I, I kind of think I should even be keeping the queens on the board in this, this position because uh, um, his king looks a little bit more exposed to me. And let's get the rook down into that aggressive square. And I love I love playing with all my pieces. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna change. Okay, I'm not gonna change it yet. So how can I get the bishop in? Well, okay. Is it wise to move my king away? Many ways I can probably do this. Uh, how about this one? Oh, I've got to watch out for some bishop d5. I don't want to fall for that, do I? But maybe this is all right, followed by queen takes c3. Slightly ris risky way of doing it. Okay, let's let's go for it. 
And you can go bishop d5 now, actually, which I missed. So that was a silly move. You can play here. I'm still doing well because I, I can, I can just pick up the pawns. He's played it. He's found. He's found this good move, and this has made it slightly more tricky than I would have wanted, as I usually do. And a uh, little lack of concentration. But his king's still very weak, and I, I'm what two pawns up here, so. I'm still going to have to play very badly to lose this, and I'm very good at tempting fate. But this is this is probably a killer move actually, because uh, everything's dropping. It's always a good idea in these Dutch positions just to put the king on h8. If you're doing well, then putting the king on h8 it, it is such a sensible move to play, because it, it often just gets out of control. You know, there's often some tactical check, and I'm gonna, you know what? I'm just going to take the queens off because um, we don't want any accidents and this I'm very happy to make exchanges because well I mean how many pawns up am I a bloody lot of pawns and uh, let's just queen these two pawns we don't even need this one let's just give that one up two connected past pawns I'll cut his king off and they slowly march up the board and we can just play this nice and slowly. You got a check or two, but nothing to worry about. The king will come forwards, and the pawns slowly come forwards. The king comes forwards. You kind of get you kind of get the drift here. Look at this little cheap shot. Worth a punt, yeah. I hope he resigns after this one. I hope he resigns after this one. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I, I won the first game. That, 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 that's nice. That makes, that makes a change. I'm just gonna try changing the sink again, Aldo. So thanks, thanks for checking, Aldo. I've just changed the sink again. So, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that that fits in. That fits in okay now. Smooth game. Was it a smooth game? Well, let let's put it on the computer and just see how how smooth it was. It, it, it never seems like a smooth game. I, I mean, I hate I hate doing the computer evaluation sometimes because it tells you what a wally you are. It basically, the computer says you think you've played a great game. You put it on the computer, and the computer says you are a wally. How can you think you're good? So I, I don't know. Like, I think that's a fair assessment. And you can see that uh, I'm winning. I'm winning pretty much all the way. Um, now the when the computer says it's, I, I do always, I do sometimes differ with the computer's assessment. And I don't, I don't believe that the computer thinks uh, that that white's white's really better. There, I don't, I, I'm not going to believe that. I can't believe it because otherwise the Dutch would be terrible. Uh, how's the, let's see if David's playing. So I wanted to keep a, a a good eye on my friend David Howe and has he played? And David has won his first game. David uh, is a is a tremendous blitz player, and he's won title Tuesday as well and I always think he I'm always surprised he doesn't win it more often because he's a rude David Howell is just I played him he's the one guy in Blitz that I've played you know I've really struggled against in Blitz I, I played a lot of top players in Blitz um, but uh, David David always gets me in Blitz he, he's, an, he's another level uh, maybe Magnus Carlsen as well. When I played Magnus Carlsen, I, I I have to admit I I may I may have struggled somewhat as well. Um, connection lost. Don't say that. Why are you saying that? Why are you saying my connection is lost? Is is, is saying my connection is lost now? Oh God, it's going to be one of those days, is it? So you can see it flashing, and I've got a message saying connection lost, but you can see me. So someone could just confirm, I don't know what's going on here, whether, and I've just tried refreshing, but look what we're getting now. Look what we're getting now. This is, this is, this is pretty bad, isn't it? Let's see. Let's see if we can sort this out. Has chess.com just gone down? Uh, it seems like chess.com has literally gone down for me. Is that right? Um, 
How, can anyone else confirm this? I'm literally just putting chess.com in and it's gone down. Um, not for me. What's going on? Okay, let's have a look. Let's see if this works. Change browser. Well, this browser's working fine. Why do I need to change browser? This is a. Let's just see if BBC News works or something. Yeah, I mean, other sites are working well. Why is chess.com not working? This is ridiculous. Okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try changing browser, but this is just typical. I get very annoyed. If someone can have a look. Then, bad gateway. Why is that not working? Tournament server might be down. There's, is their site down? If someone could confirm, that'd be good. I'm not going to change. Changing browsers takes a lot of a lot of hassle actually, because I've got this all set up as well. Uh, I mean, other sites are working. Just chess.com doesn't seem to be working for me. Um, so, okay, let's see if I can change browser then. I don't know if I've even even got anything else except for Google Chrome. I have got Google Chrome down for me in the UK. UK server might be down. This is just this is just terrible, you know. Chess, I mean, like, come on, sort sort it the fuck out. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, not good, is it? I can try refreshing, can I? Let's have a look. It's actually very stressful, you know, when you're playing, you you know, you you're playing a game of chess and you can't get on and you know your 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 time's going down. It's like I used to have nightmares when I was a kid about this. I don't have Firefox. I have to download Firefox. I used to literally have nightmares. I didn't turn up for the game. And I, I think I might just withdraw. If it's going to literally, I'm going to lose a game because it's fucked up, then I'm not going to, I'm just going to, I don't know, I don't know why. I'm trying to, I'm trying to load. It's not loading. Okay, we're in at last. Let's see if I've lost a game. And probably, let's hope. You got a zero point buy. I mean, for fuck's sake. I, I'm just like, I'm sorry, but that is, and it's changed my board setup and everything. It's like, come on, man. You know, I'm very annoyed by that. Very annoyed by that. And uh, yeah, it's back up now, but uh, it, it, it's crashed here and I've just lost the point. And uh, it just, 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 just pisses me off basically because, uh, um, you know, well, you could probably understand why it pisses me off. I felt like I was going to do well today. Then you have something like that come along, um, which is obviously a problem at their end because um, every other website was working. And I don't know why, I don't know why it's changed. I don't know why it's changed my layout here as well. So, uh, um, okay, I'll keep playing, but uh, you know, you can understand why that's annoying. Why has it changed my bloody layout? So now I'm gonna have to readjust everything as well. Okay, I've got a zero point buy. Sod off you. It's changed my board design. Let's, let's have it so I can see the board better. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll just have to come back from that. I mean, I, I mean, annoying. Uh, these things do happen on every site. Happened on Lee Chess, didn't it? But of course, I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to vent my anger because it's still annoying when other people it's not happening to, but it happened there. As soon as you finish a game, why couldn't it happen at some other time? As soon as you do it, <laughs> I mean, come on. Okay, well, we're gonna have to wait now and just, uh, unfortunately. Um, wait for another game. Let's see how David Howe's getting on at least. Um, yeah, I've got 100% so far. That's that's um, that's that's positive. Don't let it discombobulate you. We we have to get four out of five. That's always the score that I'm going for. And now I have to get three out of three to get. It'll be like maximum. It'll be four out of four really. So let's get to four out of five, and I'll, I'll be smiling again. So I've got to win the next three. 
just win every game. But you know, sometimes when you feel good and you feel like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do well today, then that happens. Anyway, um, we won't let it annoy us too much. Uh, yeah, Ajimata's Christmas talk. Well, Ajimata's Bitcoin tournament had problems. Every every site has problems. Look, I mean, I run, I run a couple of websites. Quite possibly the best website in the world. You really should check this website out. I'm just going to put the link in the chat. But we had some issues with that when it first came on. Uh, it's just just obviously frustrating, is it, when you're in the middle of a game? But did anyone else have this? I used to have literally when I was um, younger and I was playing a lot of chess and tournaments. I I literally uh, had nightmares about turning up late for the game, and I'd I'd turn up and I'd be in a lost position. That was one of my nightmares. So I'm getting those. I'm getting those childhood flashbacks now. <laughs> childhood flashbacks from from uh, from this. It's like, oh my god, my 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 childhood nightmares are coming back. So uh, uh, you know, that's why I'm getting a bit jittery, a little bit jittery. Um. Anyway, David House. David House seems to be doing okay here. He is a pawn down, but. I think I'd prefer to be white in this position. I've played this guy many times, both of these guys. But I quite like white's position because of uh, his queen side pressure. And he's got two bishops. And he's probably going to win a pawn on the queen side here. So I, black's trying to make some eliminations here. Jazz is best. I don't, I don't do any coaching, actually. I, I'm literally, or I say literally a lot, but I'm... I'm doing so much um, video work and I just seem to be busy a lot of the time now that I, I, I don't do coaching anymore. The only coaching I do is obviously creating videos, um, which I think see as a form of coaching, you know, creating videos and uh, doing that. So that's that's my coaching. Now, David might win on time here, but actually I, I, I position not, not, not so clear, not so clear. Um, and the knight slipped in here. The bishop has to move. Now, what kind of board do we like? I'm just wondering, do we change the board colour? Do we like this colour, people? What do you like? Do you like this colour or do we like a green? I kind of like a bit of green. J-R-H-K. Uh, yeah, that match on Blair, Blair versus Danny Gormali. I didn't actually see it, but just, uh, just Danny is a very strong chess player, Danny Gormali. Green, orange. I quite like green. Blue is best. Best by test. Cool. Brown, please. Cool. You guys, you guys are going for a lot of different colours, aren't you? Um, okay. Brown. Let's try that. No, I don't like that. I'm afraid. Green. I quite like green for some reason. Ugh. I don't know. I'm sure there's certain colours you play better under, but green's a bit like what the hell. Ugh. Glass? No, we don't like that. Blue? Not sure, really. ICC? Should we stick with ICC? Should we go with the ICC? Should we go with that? Go Walnut? No, Walnut. Walnut's a bit like... You can only do Walnut if you've got a 3D chess set. And we don't have a 3D chess set, do we? Tournament? Well, I am in a tournament. We could try that, but that's a real... I don't know. I think we'll stick with this one, guys, for now. Where is black and white? Black and white would be nice, actually. Nice traditional black and white. I agree, but I can't see it on the list. So I'm just having a look now. I can't even see. Why can't they just have black and white? Um, dark wood. Glass. Graffiti. We'll go with this one. We'll go with this one. I should I should better work with this. Well done, David, on winning that one. Uh, so David's on two out of two. And, um, well, uh, hopefully the next round should start. It's also a little bit annoying, that rule, that I, I can understand why it is, but if you're disconnected when the game starts, it's a forfeit. Um, and you're one, one, one frame off. Okay. I'll probably need to fix that. I don't know how to fix that, Aldo, actually, but... Uh, thanks, Alan. Look, but it, I, 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 at least it's workable for today, right, Aldo? I'll try to fix it for the future if I can, because uh, it's, it's quite annoying. 
Yeah, it's quite weird that you know you're not logged in at the start of the game and you and you default. But maybe it should be like gives you thirty seconds. But I can't understand why because if people withdraw without withdrawing properly, is uh, is the way to go. Choose metal. People are saying, "Cool, you guys like your particular boards. Is this metal going to be horrible?" I don't know. I don't know what. Oh, that's... Ooh, I don't know about that. Is that that's a weird board, isn't it? Okay, you know what? I might like it. I don't know. I don't know if I like this or not. Do we like this? Or do we not like this? I'm kind of like I'm kind of like oh god, the game started. I'm kind of like this board could be nice or it could be absolutely disgusting. Um um Okay, we'll, we'll go for it with this game anyway. I don't mind drab if if we win. Drab is okay. But we've got to win this one. We've got to win the next three. Yeah, I think we'll change this for next time. It is a bit drab, but drab, drab, drab's maybe what we want, right? Hello, I, I, I'm obviously having a look at the chat as I'm speaking. Kind of, look, kind of looks good, I don't know. Uh, hello to uh, Croatia. Um... I see someone from Croatia and it is in the chat. I should I should really look at this line and try to work out what to do. This move maybe? Uh Croatia's I've never never been to Croatia actually, but I would very much like to go to Croatia. Can we go here? Let's go here. Beautiful country, Croatia. Uh, uh, definitely. I've got some friends who um are from that neck of the woods. I've got to look at this line actually. This is one line which I, I've had before and I've struggled a little bit with. Now you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play very boringly because I don't want to get in trouble in the opening. Now this move is not an attempt to get an advantage. It's just an attempt at getting a position. Now he didn't really need to do that, did he? Immediately. And, and this position is, well it could even be a little bit worse for me because of these pawn weaknesses, but uh, it's at least a position that I shouldn't get in. We can just play chess and try to outplay our opponent. Um, now, do we let him have this one? I don't think so. Let's let's go here. Maybe I mean it's certainly a little bit worse for me this, but okay. I've got to look at this. I've got to look at this particular variation uh, and um, make sure I work out what to play against it. Uh, this e5 move in the opening. I'm going to look on G chess. Maybe someone can. Okay, someone have a look on G chess for me. Obviously, um, obviously, uh, don't tell me what to play in the actual game. Okay, so what 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 am I trying to do here? This is what I'm thinking, and it's not so easy to work out. Now my knight doesn't seem to be great. I'd love to get it around here or something like that. Now do I castle my knight? My knight feels like it should be rerouted maybe here let's try and reroute this but um, again i'm not even convinced by the this plan my opponent coming into these two squares as well and how do we do this well obviously i, I obviously i'm looking for this square my opponent's playing well at the moment and, and if i lose clearly i can blame it on this crappy board design no, I'm, not, I'm not, not liking this position much in actual fact. So I'm going to play for now the f5 square, but I'm kind of feels like I'm drifting a little bit here. And I'm worried about this square as well. So my idea at some point is to get the bishop here and try to control f5. I'd love to get, get some squares, but we're a long way off. And maybe his h pawn can be a weakness. So now, if I take this, which I think I must do, he gets the bishop. And how is this position? This is this is kind of all right. Maybe I come in with the king on the light squares, but I prefer to have the bishop always in these positions. So. Um, 
my idea was obviously to get this square maybe maybe start advancing with my pawn so a, a good move there and i think i've got to put my pawn on a light square slightly risky policy because he's got a light square bishop which means that might be weak but it's much more important to find some squares for my knight and this square in particular and let's remember i have a poor majority no another very good move there from my opponent this is actually a very good move because he's coming straight in here and this this is this is actually very this is very actually strong oh dear i don't want to lose control of this file but what can i do what can i do here the bishop comes back here he comes in here check and I'm, I'm actually in a lot of trouble so this is not nice i need to go super defensive and a real shame to start moving my king backwards and i'm in i'm in trouble here because i'm going to drop the a pawn i can't get my can't get my rook in the game so this is this has been quite a difficult game and this move was a very clever move that my opponent played so I'm desperately trying to play on the area of the board where I'm strongest I think we have to come here and it's a race which I am not so confident in especially after his last move good move and this is this is just a losing position uh unfortunately there's nothing i could do here i'm trying to activate my rook but so what so uh tough game any way i can get into this position at all well i have to take our opportunities and that this is a little opportunity that we got i don't really want to drop this pawn i've got nothing nothing winning there but what else can i do i have to drop this one and this is the problem this is the issue and it is a nasty issue. Okay, I'll take that one. No, we won't, because we lose a piece. Rook d4 check. Very tough position, this. Trying everything we can. Oh God, again, I lose a piece if I do that. Yeah, I mean, a draw is not really any good, but what can we do? Obviously a draw now. Oh, I'll just take the draw, shall we? Ah, okay. Lose a, lose a bit of mojo there after that stupid board colour. We keep going because, uh, but I'll lose a little mojo after that disconnect. Hello, hello, Captain Bumratty. Yeah, we did all right. We, well, we did all right in the first game, but then let's try this brown. Let's try brown, a bit brighter. Uh, but then we got disconnected, and I was saying that brings back memories of the worst nightmare. But we're on one and a half, one and a half out of three. I've been on worse, I feel. And we've got loads of games to go. So let, let's let's try to enjoy the rest of the games and play a bit better than that. Uh, that wasn't a very impressive game. But he, he, he actually played quite well. He played... Let's just have a look at the opening. I'm, I'm actually intrigued. We should always have a look when... Uh, when the opening doesn't go right. Now, I would... I would like to have a look on G-Chess. Um... Let's see if I can do that quickly. Let's see. So my games, uh, what was it? Let's try to update this if we can. Might not update in time. 
because uh, it takes a while to update. That's not the game I played, is it? So, uh, okay, so let's all look at the opening. Make sure the next game doesn't start. Don't want to default another one. But, um, and I don't trust the analysis here. I much prefer the G chess stuff because what, what does this all mean? For okay, so C4 is given as a dubious move by chess.com, but I know, let's put the position on G chess, that it's actually a very good move because it's a move that Duda played and we know how good Duda is and Duda played this move and we can look at the resources here kid a tromp Duda versus Wojtacek and Duda played c4 and it's actually a good move so you can see the difference in analysis here that on chess.com the computer just gives it as a bad move but I give it in my analysis as a good move so e5 is certainly a a good option and I've forgotten what I recommended here so I'm just going to quickly look and I do give pawn takes d5 queen takes d5 and now I think I play knight f3 right but the move I should be playing according to my own analysis are we okay the next game started but luckily is e3 there but I probably shouldn't look at that while I'm playing a game right so because that, that that's a bit dodgy um is this guy going to play a move? Let's see. I probably shouldn't be going on G chess when any moves being played. Imagine that. We get disconnected, then we get booted out of the tournament as well. I don't really want to win like this. I, I want to play some chess. There's no point. I've actually would have then played four games and only played four rounds and only played two games. So let, let's let's hope this guy let's hope this guy plays plays a move soon. Is this guy berserking? I like that. One thing I'm not going to do is berserk myself because I can't I can't play I can't play short of time I need all the time I've got if he wants to play slowly he can but come on play a move I want to finish my analysis on that last that last game I had he's not going to play a move is he he's not going to play a move I don't think what is berserking berserking is something you can do on lee chess or lie chess lee chess which I play on most of the time now and lee chess when you're playing in a tournament you can berserk and that means you cut off okay he, he was berserking let's let's go for a dragon and you you basically start a minute less than your opponent but if you win you get more points i'm gonna i'm gonna come at him with a dragon which is oh this move i this move the leaven fish right and this oh god he's banging out he's banging out some scary stuff here e5 and i remember looking at this again a long time ago um but i can't entirely recall what we do here is this possible at some stage let's go let's go knight c5 this can be very dangerous with the queen coming here and uh attack 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 so i have to be I have to be careful so Okay, well, we're going to have to start counterplay on the queen side, so we have to get the bishop to b7. And, and I'm, I'm, he's getting this Dutch attack, so I've got to learn a better line against this Levenfish. This is actually a very scary line, and actually f5 now terrifies me. Absolutely terrifies me. So I played very quickly, but I've walked into a bad line here. Because then he's got the bishop coming in, the knight coming in, and you may have seen me do this to people, but it's now been happening to me. And how am I going to defend that? God knows. Any suggestions? I don't know how I'm going to defend that. Is 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 the answer? Do I have to take here? And ugh. oh, he's played it, bastard. Um, so how do we defend this? This is scaring me. Okay, I'm going to try taking here. Um, and going king h8. And if I get a chance, rook to g8. I recall that Gwen Jones once played this against me when I played a Dutch, and he managed to defend quite well. And I was more scared of some move like knight g5 on the last move because then he'd be threatening this immediately. Not so scared of this. It looks terrifying. And maybe I should be scared, but he can't get rid of this knight easily. 
because if his knight comes in here, I eliminate it with my bishop. He needs to get rid of this knight, and then he will checkmate me. But if he can't get rid of that knight, I can take here. And let's remember, I've got, I've got some action going on on g2. And the only reason I remember this defensive method is um, that Gwaine Jones played it against me. I see Stu saying he went berserking in Glastonbury once. I, I went to Glastonbury many a time. I love Glastonbury. Let's, let's, let's not let this guy have all the fun. Let's try and have some fun as well. I, I think I went to the Glastonbury Festival like four times. I climbed over the fence three of those times. And I'll be honest, one of the times I went to Glastonbury, I can't, I can't remember it at all. I can't remember anything. It was absolute blur. Should we take the rook? Um, and this should now be winning for me. But how are we going to do this correctly? Queen here, increase the pressure. Get rid of that one here. Okay, let's think this through a little bit. Not too much. Should be winning here, so how about we take here and then come here because if he captures my queen it's actually not just check it's checkmate now i'd love to go rook g3 but then ah oh, this is nice this is a very nice line this is a very very nice line okay he loses on time but the point of this is if he goes queen takes d4 winning a queen then i have bishop f3 check king h2 rook g2 check king h1 rook d2 discovered check he has to move here and at the end of the complications we're a piece up so he's looking at, looking a little bit looking a little bit scary there yeah i think the glastonbury i can't remember was like 90 98 or something like that and it was a really good lineup in glastonbury it was, it was really good, but I can't remember one band I played. And we won't go into details. We won't go into details why. <laughs> it was a long time ago. A different life. Um, but yeah, we, I went there I went there with... Maybe if I bring out an autobiography, I'll write back. But I went there with two friends. One of the best friends from nowadays. And we drove down. We stopped off at Stonehenge. And um, uh, met some travellers there. And it was used to be when you could get into Glastonbury for free. Well, not free, but used to be travelers used to get in for free and you could get in a lot of people. We, you know, we were poor and it was a bit naughty. You wouldn't do it now, but you used to, they used to have this big fence around it and you spent, you went there at the middle of the night, like on a Thursday and, and you'd be like a ninja and you go through the forest and you try to find a way over the fence. And, and there's three of us and we try to find a way over the fence. So then you have to get around the security and you're in. And we didn't have a tent or anything and we had, we just had our we just had our jumpers uh we just we just had our jumpers and a coat and i think we stayed there like four days and i think we slept maybe in the circus tent at one point possibly long time ago long time ago <laughs> um maybe blur did play the same year year as that it was around it was around the end of the 90s wasn't it i don't know i can't remember i can't remember um that was quite a nice game um at the end and it was actually i mean i'm sure it was quite fortunate at this stage um that i remembered this defensive setup because i think i'm actually this is very scary uh but the, the move that's the move that had me a little bit more worried was knight g5 here because my whole strategy is based on getting this rook counterplay in this position and had he played knight g5 in the game he moved his bishop out and this allowed me to get my rook here and then my other rook comes over in defense but if he plays knight g5 in this position then i can't play rook g8 because knight takes f7 is checkmate and i can never kick this knight away because of the pin and the kind of thing he i don't know maybe this is not so bad for me because my bishop is a very good piece so i was thinking he'd normally in the dutch you'd like to get your rook around but you can't do that here maybe you can bring it this way it's still still scares me somewhat uh this this position 
uh, this position scares, scares me a lot, but okay. Let's have a look at the scores uh, and see how our friend David Howell is getting on. Gwen Jones. Gwen Jones has done, I, I've mentioned David Howell, but Englishman Gwen Jones plays in this tournament on a regular basis and um, he's done very well in the past and it's great to see him on four out of four. That's basically where I'd be if I didn't, if I hadn't disconnected as we all know. But um, if I'm not there, lovely chap, Gwen as well. Uh, very, very good play and um is, is david howell still in let's see let's see if david's on four out of four as well oh no it looks like david's grandilius some quality players i can't see i can't see uh david howell can anyone else see him i can't see him um so uh he, he, hello yobius um charlie charlie's doing well thank you very much quite an old cat now but he's doing well uh he's uh, just sleeping at the moment since i've changed house he doesn't like this office as much it, it's quite a small office that i'm in here but he he, he has a good life he's a good good times um and uh night time asking ginger jim lived in a circus tent well i didn't actually live in a circus tent but i did spend a night in a circus tent at Glastonbury I think that's what my friend said anyway can't remember Charlie the cat is 18 years old so he's doing very well for 18 uh, and Charlie uh, Charlie is uh, he gets he gets physiotherapy once a week I, I take it's quite funny I get up at like seven o'clock each morning and I take him for a walk down the road because he's a little bit senile so he has a half an hour walk with me and he's a cat every morning <laughs> which is quite quite weird right he likes his he likes his half an hour walk in the morning so i can't see where david is but um there is a break now after round four because they try to find any cheaters and i think we're on um two and a half out of four so we need to win the next game three and a half out of five it's okay it would actually be three and a half i haven't lost a game yet have i have i ever done a Titan Tuesday where I have have not lost a game. I don't know. Are oh, we getting the cat stories now? No, not not in the lead. I don't take him on a lead because he's eighteen. He doesn't like leads. When we first moved here, I see someone saying, "And you're an old lady who took him on a took their cat on a lead." We used to take him out on a lead while he got used to the area, but he doesn't have a lead now. He just just walks next to me. You know, we just go for a little walk. And he sometimes pops into someone's garden, but you know, he likes his little walks. Um, Yobius, any chance for a work visit to the Netherlands soon? Probably not, but I have a couple. I had a good friend who just moved to Amsterdam, so uh, possible I might, you know, try and try to get over at some point, but just very busy at the moment. Um, David Howell maybe got server connective issues. It's possible. I don't know what happened with a server earlier, but it's just really annoying, obviously, when something like that happened. Maybe, maybe someone can check the scores for me and, and see what happened to him. I, I, I'm not going to do that now. Uh, but well done, Gwen. It's good to see a fellow fellow Englishman up there at the top for now. Um, so... Doo -doo -doo. I'm just looking at your chat your chat anything else than alcohol cause this memory loss uh, I don't know what you're talking about I am Jones 789 how's the new course getting on well I, I've just I should probably be to be totally honest I should probably be filming in it now um, I've just managed to set up it's a chessable course and the I think the reason that chessable is so good and the leading I know chess learning site out there is because of uh, their uh, um, their extremely high standards I mean the course is if you're gonna make a course if you make a course for chessable and it's not I've worked for nearly every company every company but chessable they 
require it to be like such a high standard before it gets into the system and the same goes for their their filming like their camera setup and everything like that so i've actually spent the last day and a bit just getting my technical stuff ready to film again even though i filmed like how many chessboard courses i filmed like nine courses so i'm going to start filming my chessboard course um like tomorrow probably and if you're wondering what the chessboard course is on it's it's on an opening that i used to play and the opening is this trendy line where you play Harry Four here. So this is this is my new chessboard course, which may look ridiculous, but all the top players are playing it now, and it's something I know a lot about. And I love doing courses on these more interesting ideas because I think there are a lot more. There's a lot more um, imagination and uniqueness that you you have to you have to uh, uh, basically think about uh, in these courses they're more unique than just following the normal lines so I find them a lot more interesting and just the fact that nearly every top player has been experimenting with this move is catching on curious chimpanzee thank you for the um, cheerio there thank you very much all your subbing and uh, and cheers is most appreciated in this channel um, Shark Week Football Club, maybe FC. Yeah, I've got over twenty seven hundred lead chess, but that that quickly. Well, I'm still over, just about over twenty seven hundred at the moment. Um, I've been Aldo saying you've been in front of the camera more times than a top Hollywood star. <laughs> that is true, actually. Ah, I spent so much time filming chess courses now, but that's what I like doing: passing on my love of chess to 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 people chess ball content on g chess as well yeah there is i mean go and have a look at g chess yourself i mean i think g chess is really really cool this is g chess site got all our videos lined in the only chess ball content oh we're in with a game okay so we're playing demichenko who seems Russian 2870 seems like this is going to be an interesting encounter and there's only one move to play in such a situation and it is the king's gambit I hate it when they play this d5 move this d5 move is the Albion counter gambit one of the one of the reasons that I don't play the king's gambit I don't like the king's gambit anymore this counter gambit I find very annoying now this line I, I'd spent a lot of time trying to make the King's Gambit work because generally it's just considered it's it's a bad gambit line and the best I could find against d5 is this weird move I'm playing here which kind of looks ridiculous but because you're swapping the Queens off but it's the only computer approved thing that might gain white equality <laughs> I'm afraid to say okay right so I've got to remember now what 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 we are doing here so um i'm assuming i'm assuming we want to uh do something disruptive before he castles so let's let's go for this check here and i know this is not what you want to do when you play the king's gambit but so sometimes needs must and i'm a pawn down and I can hope that I'm going to get some compensation with these kind of moves here and my my slightly better development. So this is the thing: if you're playing a good player like this guy, Russian strong grandmaster, it's very hard to play the king's gambit. And if they know some this Albion counter gambit, is very good. And I love playing the king's gambit, but it's a pity that some lines are good. And this is the best line I could find when I analysed this a long time ago. Now I wonder if he can go bishop e6 here. I mean, this is something I sh should be thinking of okay he's gone here so now I've got to I've got to play actively so here well he might bring his knight in and um, how's that gonna end up is this check any good I don't want to move my piece away from this so I've got to play very accurately now to, to justify this this pawn sack knight here seems correct but knight e5 very nice square for his knight 
Rook takes e5, h6 or something. Can we do that? I'm not sure I like it particularly. This check here. King comes. Okay, maybe this check is right, but I'm really forced then to make it a proper sacrifice. King f6, and I, I can't see what I'm playing next. So this seems to be the only only possibility from the process of elimin eliminating. Now knight e5, I'm hoping I can go rook takes here, but he's going to get the bishop pair then. Maybe his king being a little bit weak, but he probably won't even take my bishop. His knight is going to be so strong here. So I want to go rook takes, let's say h6 and go knight f3 and try to get rid of the knight. But I, I need to I need to win this pawn back. Otherwise, I'm just going to be a pawn, a pawn down. Um. So my plan here, obviously, if I can get this move in, I, I, I'm 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 happy. This move, I get my pawn back. His king is a little bit weak. My pawn structure is worse because of these guys. But now I, I think I have to play this one. Now tactically, I'm a little bit scared because there's things going on. But I can't waste time moving my bishop. And I think I have to play here. And now he's going to get the bishop pair. Which is, I don't know, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i not better here, but can, can I claim some equality? Well, not after, not after my last move. My last move was shite. Why do I play these things? I, I think I'm just dropping exchange with that one. Oh, Simon. I mean, this is just, this is just bad. Jay. Why did I, why did I do that? I'm trying to swap off some bishops. He's played this well. He, he's dodged all the King's Gambit bullets, but uh, this is, this is now, I can't see I can't see what I'm gonna do here. It just seems very bad for me. So the only thing I could uh, just miss this simple move. This is really bad, yeah. Unfortunate King's Gambit just refuted basically. And I'm gonna lose the exchange there, whatever. So um, there's nothing to be done. And not really much coming back from a position like this against a strong player so so we'll have a look at this afterwards um the opening the opening win i'm obviously not going to give up but um when you're playing someone of this standard it's not easy when you're down on time i mean okay i've got a good night this is the very slight glimmer in a horrendous situation but the opening didn't go right and this is why the king's gambit is risky so he's gonna open up lines for his rooks which he has now done and he will come in this way probably not so much i can do to stop that only active way I can think about playing is, is coming this way. But it's very easy for him to stop that plan, just rookie seven. I mean, if I hadn't lost the exchange, then I'm not sure about that one. This is, this is now a rather weak weakness oh god it's hard when you're oh god it's not getting better is it it's not getting better guys that's the end yeah 
okay let's have a look there let's let's see let's see yeah this is this is this is why one of the reasons i don't play the king's gambit because i just i i looked at this albion counter and i take in the pawn is okay but i i just couldn't find a solution to it and uh it, it, it's kind of a gamble when when you play the king's gambit um it's a good line to play for black this 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 variation my opponent played because it avoids any of the the hassle or, or or thing and you can you can see from quite an early start that you know i'm just always a little bit worse here and it goes down quite quickly um around here there was some chance so okay so knight g5 is a great move but let's not trust i'll put it on g chess so i trust g chess more so i'm gonna now go to this site i hope the next round doesn't start because uh oh, we'll do it this because i prefer looking at the openings on this i'm just going to set the board up again let's have a look because i um so he took here no he didn't do that he went d5 takes takes here um here 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 bishop d6 and just make sure the next game hasn't started so let's have a look now what should i play here so there's not any annotated games on this what does layla think we'll put it on layla probably doesn't like it so layla actually thinks queen e2 is okay now this hasn't been played that many times it's only been played 12 times and castles is the best move so you do maybe have to sacrifice this pawn so maybe queen e2 was wrong here interestingly um oh look at this i've had this twice before so i should know the answer to this but i i, I i've got <laughs> which this is online i've had this before but actually i i do trust andrew greet so let's just have a look what andrew greet did but well, he went queen e7 queen here and this position just seemed quite bad for me right as the computer is also saying the computer is also saying that i'm worse here so i don't want to play like this so queen e2 can't be right so if i ever get this again i'm probably castling so let's put this on the board and see if there's any games of this and the highest rated player who's played this is it's been played in 2005 and if you insist on playing by an 1800 which doesn't give me a lot of hope i'm not saying 1800s are all bad but you probably have to play like this and try to get the pawn back with knight d4. So at least if I get this again, at least if I get this again, I actually castling, I will certainly play. And maybe I can only be a little bit worse, which is a bit bad when you're playing with the white pieces. So this line, the, Albi the, the Albion counter, a very good way to play against the King's Gambit. If I was facing the King's Gambit, I would, I would probably, uh, let's go for the black line. Let's have some fun. I would play the albion counter because you don't let them have their fun and you, you you get you get the activity with black and it's white who who has to try to equalize okay so we're on two and a half out of five so not not a great start so we need to really um win a, a shitload of games now to to uh impress but one of those games was obviously a default and um I'm playing this line. Anyone know what this is called? Anyone know? Come on, who knows what this is called? You should all know what this is called. It is the black line. Someone, you did ask for it, Peacescape. It is the risky line, even better Sledgehammer. Now, the more sensible line is where, where you don't start playing this kind of crazy stuff. Now, one trick you have to watch out for, if you go G5, they take on E5, sack a piece and go Bishop D4. So if you're a true cowboy, you should play this move. But this move is highly risky. And in my chessboard course, I call it the risky line because I do mention the computer doesn't like it. And a more sensible way to play is just a castle king side. But we want to we wanna try to go for checkmate. This is the risky line. The chessboard course covers the more sensible options. I remember when I was doing this chessboard course, I was like, I can't just recommend this line to people because I, I, it's so risky that if white plays well, you're not, you're not gonna get what you want. 
So I had to then give it an alternative variation for black, which is a lot safer. But okay, but let's keep let's keep hammering away. And we're just going for the king. And Geronimo, in we go. See a king, kill a king is correct. Now, the problem is when he hasn't gone h3, it's it's quite hard to, to break him down. So we're going to have to just keep going. And this is what the black line is all about. It's literally like you are a lunatic and you're playing the most riskiest moves you can think of. Now, if I castle here, is he going to grab that pawn there? He might well do that. If I takes here, takes here. Am I scared? I think I've got to stop being scared in this position. We've just got to keep going. If he takes here, I would at least open the G file. Where am I going? I'd love to castle queenside, but I'm a little bit worried about him actually grabbing the pawn on a7. Not because he wins a pawn, but because his bishop can come back to b6. So he's not threatening to capture that one. Now, um, I'm so tempted to castle. Oh, we can castle actually, can't we? We can castle because my rook will be lined up there. I mean, this is still like really punting, isn't it? Because it's all in. I'm not worried about a pawn. Who cares about a pawn there? It's, it's irrelevant. And we just got to get these guys over and just like pray. Just pray. Um, so yeah basically that's what we're doing here yeah. let's just move the king calmly and um, how do we how do we generate an attack here we have to go here and try to get down on the h file right now if he takes my knight i take with a pawn and it is check i mean <laughs> this is why it's called the risky line right it's called the risky line because it's blooming risky and he's coming over here okay come on then so come and have a go well, I have to play. I have to, sw I have to swing it, right? But my king is also under a hell of a lot of fire here. So this is this is absolutely crazy stuff here. And we have to open up the H file, and I have to try. I, I just have to sack this piece. I have to try and get there before my opponent does what a position yeah so anyone think they're brave enough to play this opening <laughs> is anyone play the black line you can see that if you play the black line you just get mental stuff like this all the time that's why i like playing it because it's loads of fun and at the end of the day you know chess should be fun right okay well we have no choice there we have to take this one and we have to take here but if he takes there i'm going to take here Boom! He takes here. Rook g2. King f1. Rook h1. Checkmate. Takes. Rook takes h2. So he hasn't done that. He's come in here. What is going on, boys and girls? I'm going to take this. We've got to keep opening up lines. If he takes here, he's trying to keep me out of his position. And now... We've got to use our good friend, Harry O. Harry O, baby. Now this one, let's open up the H file again, maybe. But my queen, I need to get my queen in the game. Do we go to G3? No, we, we open up the H file. We need to get my queen into the game. So this is a very long maneuver. I'm not sure I like that one. How do we get the queen over? So I'm also worried about my king. Oh, it's probably too, I mean, it's too late to worry, isn't it? Okay. You just got to keep going forwards in life, they say. I could have taken his knight there, but why didn't I do that? Okay, we'll do it now. And funny position still, actually. I mean, it's it's like my rook is suddenly like very strangely placed. 
can't allow his queen to come in because I have sacrificed a piece, right? But the position is looking good. I'm going to take your queen off. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> black line, risky black line for the win, right? Oh, the black line. I mean, like, in these games, in these games, it just any result is possible. I mean, like, you don't, you, you look at these games, thank you, Chess Chef. You, this is the kind of game you don't really want to look at with a computer afterwards because it's clear I was probably losing and winning that game on multiple occasions. But, 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 it's fun. It's a fun opening, right? It's a fun opening. We want more black line, don't we, after that? And I, I do, you know, I, I, like I say in the chessboard course, I think the black line is, is, is probably not entirely sound. This variation, the risky line. But oh my god, how much fun is it? <laughs> and we don't always play, we play chess to have fun as well. I mean, clearly. So um, there were some interesting possibilities there. So for example, this, this rook g8 is, the issue I have here, yeah, after bishop e3, a well-known trick is that you, you kind of want to play g5, knight g6, but this actually loses to this idea. And now white has knight takes e5, bang. And the point of this is you go queen takes, they go bishop d4, you move your queen, and then this move is really strong. The knight moves and they go e6 and they attack your rook. So all these little things, a uh, little, little, uh, uh, well, things, things you need to know. But um, in uh, if you play rook g8 first, it's, it's kind of crazy looking, but at least you don't fall for that same tactic. And you go g5 you put your, you you cross your fingers and you you hope you hope you uh you hope you check mate first and there was there was a very interesting moment later on i mean i, I don't know you know i've just got to keep attacking right there's there's nothing else i can do you just got to keep pushing now one idea is maybe h3 and knight g2 here the other idea is obviously g5 g4 you just gotta you gotta hope i'm sure this is still not sound and, and around about here well i need to get this rook in but it got very exciting at this moment here because suddenly it's not so easy for him to defend h2. So if he goes rook e2, I just take his rook with my knight. So he starts a counterattack, and I think his idea here was to play this move, but he probably missed that I can actually take on h2 anyway. And the point being, if he takes my queen, I have rook g2 and rook h1 checkmate. So he can't actually do that. And that is a very uh, crazy checkmate, right? So if we go back to back to the position, that's that's why he, he I don't even know the piece count. That's why he plays h4. And I've got to open up the position. I'm not worried about this piece here. Um, we've got to open up the position. And, and at least there's some attacking chances here. I don't believe even here is probably enough. But it's some attacking chances now he has to stop rook g2 and his king is still a little bit weak but the problem here is if my queen was over here i might be doing okay but i had to try and get it around here but it takes so many moves i'm still not entirely believing this uh, um this one is and i thought probably he could start a counter attack here as well and then it would just be a complete race situation but after here, I, I, I should actually just take this knight straight away. But I think I think even with this move, it's now anyone's game. I mean, now, now I've probably got full compensation because I've got this idea. My bishop can come in. My queen can come in. And my king, my king is reasonably safe in those positions. So, well, we're going to have to try it again, aren't we? <laughs> Who are we playing now? Who's this, who's this guy? He looks like he's probably a strong, strong guy, right? Okay, we're going to get the Dutch. Phew, was saved. Was saved by one d four. Who who is this guy? Who I don't know who this guy is. Anyone know? Okay, he's gonna. Oh what? Did I? It looked like I I somehow missed a move there. Uh, that was weird. I don't understand that. Who is this guy? Anyone know? Okay, but anyway, it's good to play these high players. So um, we're just gonna. I've had this this g four line. It is in actual fact. A line that I play often uh, myself 
and it leads to again crazy positions. So we're in for another another fun game here. Now where do we put our bishop in this kind of this kind of position? We probably put it on f6, right? We probably try to get it to this square. So we have to get the knight into the middle and to try and consolidate it. He's going to come here and he's getting his queen coming over and this is very scary again very very scary stuff if I castle I could get slaughtered but we've got to go into the lion's the lion's den here certainly so he's trying to come in here with his queen I've got to try to defend a little bit and how are we playing this position so queen to e7 and then d6 is my idea and his knight at the moment would be trapped i couldn't play that straight away because he has queen queen into e6 check um is this i think this guy is the tallest grandmaster in in the world <laughs> i think i think he's literally the tallest grandmaster in the world that that's his like claim claim well one of his claims to fame and he's a very famous attacking player as i'm finding out in this position now i have to be careful this kind of stuff happens in bishop e5 but uh we've got to we've got to start some counterplay maybe so i think we'll try this one yeah he's the tallest i think he's the tallest if it's alexander injik he's i think the tallest grandmaster in the world he's like i've seen him before he was he, he was hanging around with morozevich at one tall one tournament the taller they are the harder they fall well at the moment it, it's a little bit scary this knight g4 is is kind of scaring me um but i'm calculating takes 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 bishop b5 and i take on f2 but um you know i, I I'm, I'm scared of my position but we've got to you know it's an interesting position it's an interesting position he's taken that one okay you know you don't even consider these moves where they actually capture something now do we what Am I going to fall into something if I take here? Is there something nasty is going to happen to me? It kind of feels like something nasty is going to happen, but I don't know what. Shall we find out? What nasty stuff could happen here? Nothing at the moment. Now, if I go here, what nasty stuff is going to happen? He's going to take here. If I go d6, what nasty stuff is going to happen? He's going to go knight here. Okay. Um, rook c8. Just c3, right? And he comes in check. So. Do we go something like this? Does that do anything? Knight b3 is very annoying. Very annoying move here. So I can't see anything else, but my time is very low. I'm going to play this one, but now knight here. And I really want to sacrifice, but how is this sacrifice going to work in the position? Is it going to work? I can't see how it works. Well... Don't think we've got any option. I want to play rook here, but then knight here check, I've realized is probably winning. Knight f6 check. And king f8. Then knight h7 check and rook g7 and it's mate. I think I'm just getting mated here. Um didn't work out well. He played very well, this guy. Just, just, uh, this will be an interesting one to look at as well. Yeah, this is just mate. He just takes here and he's going to mate me. This one is also winning, but I think he could have mated me as well. But, uh, we can resign there. That was nasty. That was a painful game. That was a painful game. Um, so I don't know if it's gonna, let's see. Um, if we can get this in my games. Let's refresh the game, see if it's already come in. Oh, I've got to put my handle in. Uh, 
I actually, I actually, I wouldn't have played Knight of Six in the opening there had I been a bit more aware. Um, let's see if it's going to refresh in time. No. Okay. Let's have a look at it on the computer here then. We're getting some interesting games today, but it's not fun when you're on the receiving end or something like that. Leave site? No. Let's wait for both of these. Okay, it is there. Okay, good. I'm going to analyze it on G-Chess as well. And because the opening is so bizarre, it didn't find any recommendations. H3, so there's lots of moves here. Okay, YouTube video here. Now, Knight of Six is probably okay. Let's see where I go wrong. G4, maybe B5 is a little bit over the top here in, in this position. I'm not taking that pawn, that's just crazy. Let's see what games have been played. Well, Grishchuk's played this as white. D5, B6, my B5 move is actually a novelty here. Okay, I quite like the look of B6. Anyone good played this? Yeah, look at that. I've played it before and I've got crushed by it. This line is very dangerous. I'm gonna have to look at this line again. Maybe maybe the way that Black has to play this is with D5. I'm thinking like instead of B6, D5 might be the right move. This is this is the move I'm gonna play in, fu in future, just to get more of a hold of the center. And um, well, it's been some, in okay, I've played this on the white side. Look at this, this is, this is peculiar. I've actually played this uh, as white. I've had this on the white side. So you can see that this H3 idea is actually a very dangerous, very dangerous line against um, uh, against the Dutch. It's a very dangerous line. But in actual fact, if we go to the computer evaluation, there was one moment here where I played C5 and I missed a chance. So what should I have played here? This is intriguing. And if we go to G chess, let's go back to the game. And I'm just gonna run, run it on this. So I played C5 and I should go D6, but this is not that good, is it? D6, Layla gives it as bad equal, but chess.com gives it as better for black, which I don't understand. It gives it as really good for black. What should, what should I have, show line, okay, D6. Knight g4, knight d7. Well, this is what I had on g chess. Okay. Well, 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 well. How'd you stop that? So I don't. So that was probably what I should have done. So let's look at it on Layla. If I go here, knight here, knight d7. And then chess.com said h4 was the best move here, didn't it? Why would anyone play h4 in this position? Just castles queenside. Okay, but at least I'm in the game. At least I'm in the game. I played this c5 move and it didn't work out. I needed to get the knight around to 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 defend my king. That that's that's clear. Well, I I actually called this the in the Killer Dutch DVD. I actually called this the um, uh, Courtenay variation because Courtenay has played this. But I've always thought this idea of h3 and and g4 is is certainly one of the more dangerous ways to to play play against the the Dutch. Um, because you're trying to destabilize it straight away. So if you're looking for an interesting line to play against the Dutch, D4, Knight F6, H3, and G4 is is certainly one one such line. Next game hasn't seemed to have started. They're a little bit slow today. I don't even know what round we're on at the moment. Um, hasn't been a very successful title Tuesday again. Uh, let's have a look. We're on round seven only, and there's still it seems a fair amount of games going on. The scores, how's Gwen doing? Can't see Gwen up there at all. Let's refresh and just make sure. We've still got four more games to go, four more painful games to go. <laughs> yes, thank you for reminding me of the score. And um, let's see if we can find Gwen. There he is. Okay, Gwen's still in a good position. Five, five and a half is a very good score in this tournament. Did David Howe withdraw? Is that what we? Uh, is that what we we found? David Howe did withdraw. Um, possibly. 
We'll play a little bit more. I'm not gonna. I'm not sure if I'm gonna play until the end of the tournament. I'm gonna try one more game. Let's try to at least get one nice game in. And I've just got so much work on at the moment, guys. This is the problem. I mean, I I, I won't be able to stream much over the next couple of days because I've got this chessboard course. Uh, that I'm gonna go D4 again. We'll play some Gambit stuff, but it's gonna be very hard to to do many streams. So I thought I'd get a stream in today, but I'm gonna have to film. I'm gonna to have to film some stuff even later tonight, which is a bit depressing. So we'll see. We'll play. We'll play a little bit more now. This is my last chessboard course, which, if you've been following Title Tuesdays, I think is a very good opening choice. And the classic mistake that Black often does is takes and d5. D5 is like what so many players play here, and he's probably listening to the stream, so he doesn't do it. Now this move. Am I worried about that pawn? I don't think we're worried about that pawn. You can have that pawn if you if you really want it. And um, this move is probably all right, I guess, but it can also be something like Queen D2 last move would have made a lot of sense. Threatening D5, uh, winning winning a piece. Um, now, if he takes on B2, I just saw I had Knight B5 here, which looked very dangerous for him because my knight can try to win my pawn back, but his queen on b2 has to worry about stuff like rook b1, when it's potential it could, uh, let's, well, let's find out. So the, the potential his queen could get in trouble somehow here. Um, how do we trap his queen? Well, you know, first of all, I'm maybe just gonna grab this pawn, but is there a way, his, okay, so now we look at his queen. Now rook here, he takes another pawn, now a3 would be very close to winning the queen. Rook here, and then queen a2. Is there some other move here that can get his queen in trouble? Bishop c4, and he's got queen here. Let's go a3, because his queen only has one square on a2. And is bishop, no, bishop c1, he takes my rook. So rook b1, he has to play queen a2. And is he surviving this one? Which would be quite amazing, I feel. Bishop c4, I can't play. I mean, knight here, we, we, we can go forwards, but knight here he takes my pawn and is he he's just about getting out so we probably have to we have to dive in i think let's go forwards he has to move his rook if he takes here i have rook b3 can i did i have something more crafty there this is the kind of position that computers are incredibly good at calculating but it's only okay so now rook b3 keeps his queen in a cage but maybe, maybe queen d3 is more accurate because his queen cannot get out and my other rook can come. So we're going to play this one because I, I want to defend here. And I may be threatening rook here and the other rook across to trap his queen now. Really tactical stuff. Well, I'm, I, might ha I might have a trapped rook, JR, but he... he he hopefully has a trap queen so he's going here which is, kind of makes sense because his queen's coming to c4 and he can also flick this move in so i have to go forwards and his queen is at least not trapped now maybe my knight will be trapped maybe my knight is going to be the uh, the the problem if i take on a6 i just lose a piece because his rook on b8 is defended and He's really playing with so much fire here. But he can probably get away with it for now. So queen here, he takes my bishop and his queen still can't get out. I don't want him going queen c4. Aha, but then my bishop is on pre. So do I now play knight to this square? To keep the queen c4 idea impossible i don't want his queen coming in here so i need to cover that square 
and my idea is rook and rook but if he takes on e3 this is so so just tact this is just tactics 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 this one this is really tactical but i've also got queen c3 and then rook a1 trapping his queen now he can try to get out this way now <laughs> it's like catch that queen catch the queen catch the queen he's going this way okay so now i have to keep the queen trapped like this or i can go rook here but then queen here and he gets out here knight here rook. okay we have to play this and i can move my i don't know i don't know if i'm ever going to get i might just give up on this queen <laughs> this queen is too hard to trap why am i trying why am i why am i stressing myself out over trapping this bloody queen I might just go f five and try to checkmate him. Cause how can I trap this queen? I can't trap this bloody queen. I'm gonna go f five and just try. I've given up on the queen. I don't know why I'm chasing a queen around when you can just try to go for the king. Let's just go for the king. The king's much more important. Don't even bothering trying to win this. Let's go. Let's just go. Go for the king, man. Swing it in. Checkmate. Boom. Don't worry about a stupid little queen checkmate ends the game my friends that's more like it don't worry about a stupid queen when you've got a king you can get yummy 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 in my tummy yum 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 that's more like it all that naffing about trap the bloody queen get the queen how's his queen gonna get out none of that stop it king checkmate bang much more fun <laughs> oh dear <laughs> well i mean it was it was that was quite an amusing game but actually maybe a five i think someone actually did uh did did make the comment of this in the chat that in this position the point is this is actually a very logical move because his queen is distracted it's on the wrong side of the board he can't use that queen to defend my rook is not just a defensive piece as we saw as soon as it swung itself over it becomes incredibly incredibly good piece and after f5 he takes here he's just getting checkmated because there's nothing to defend his king after these checks it's completely game over if he takes with this pawn then my knight can take here and it has the f6 square so again his king is in all trouble so he probably has to leave my pawn here but that pawn looks really dangerous and i can either try to trap his king or i can capture something and, and, and start some action against uh, against this guy here now i think this is round eight there's what three rounds to go three rounds to go and i'm just going to again look at that opening i'm trying to improve so i don't play the same mistake twice and uh, the opening in that game, well, I can mem memorize it. One one of the things you've got in G chess, I'll just show you the site that I'm using, which I'm trying, I'm trying to build up. It's got all these options up here, which are all cool, but this My Games option is, uh, I think, very, very good. You can, you, your Blitz games that you've played go into our system straight away. And you can see that game is now in the system. And it might not always find any improvements because this Bishop E2, is a very rare move um but i know i have it in here and we can literally just go on this is all main line and um let's just see we're back into this main line position and this is all theory this is all theory all theory and here i don't know i, I don't think i've seen queen b6 maybe this queen b6 move is a new idea you can see online games look i'm basically one of the only grandmasters who plays this online over the board this is a belarusian grandmaster kovalev who plays this uh he's he's the leading player in this in this variation and our encyclopedia well this is my chessboard course so you can look at the you can look at the chessboard course here do i do i have d5 in I don't actually look at queen b6 so queen b6 and you can even get a youtube video up as well let's see what youtube videos it's probably just my videos 
So this other thing that you've got is this YouTube search. Um, this is just one of the buttons at the top. So you put a position on the board and what we're trying to make it is basically, it's the best search chess engine of any position you can get in the world. You put a position on the board and you find multiple resources on that position to help you improve as a player. And I'll just see when I'm monstrous form board. structure. And this is a big mistake. A lot of people play this okay, move we'll do it this way around, shall we? Let's just do this again with we'll detached the window. Look at that, it's quite a good fun now, isn't it? A monstrous pawn structure, and this is a big mistake. A lot of people play this move. Yeah, so this is this is showing the position, but this is showing a video I had previously where d5 was played. So queen b6, I probably should just go queen d2 here. Probably should just go queen d2. Let's go back to, I don't think the game started because there's normally a break after round eight. Normally a break after green people no more green you don't like green okay what do you want it as okay we'll put it on brown if you want you don't like green you got you, you're that adverse to green jr what have you got what have you got against the color green it's not that offensive color green is actually a very pleasant color it's one of those colors that is very relaxing you look out green fields you know green green's a nice color don't be so insulted by the color green um anyway going back to the game uh queen b6 and here it does say i should go knight c3 okay he took here we're following now it says i should go rook c1 but it actually thinks black's doing okay here this queen b6 is a interesting idea is knight b5 not good then it still says ah oh, interesting and was i ever trapping his queen here let's have a look Rook b1, still not trapping his queen. So I can get a draw by going backwards and forwards, but we never ever consider draws because draws are draws are no good to anyone. And he's playing good moves here. He's playing good moves. It's still oh here he seems to be doing well. And he's still playing good moves. Look, bishop f8. He finds this brilliant bishop f8 move. So he's playing like perfect chess rook b3 and he finds another good move and you know the move that really threw him off like what the hell is going on boom f5 <laughs> and even though the computer thinks black is doing well here uh this is why you don't look in computers because it's just depressing he should he should not take this way because this is the losing move right look at the bar go crazy there okay anyway so if i get this again can we not go queen d2 here? Is that a good move? Actually, queen d2 is a good move. And this is one of those positions computers don't understand. d5, a lot of people play this, but in my opinion, after e5, the computer does not understand how bad black's position is here. This is where you need human, human influence. Uh, you can't always rely on computers because this position is so much worse for black then the computer understands and well look at the score look at the score on online games this is our 11 million this database here is 11 million games played on the board and it's got four out of four for white this position so queen d2 a much safer option and probably the move i will play in the future just to stop any of this nonsense with the b pawn and i hope for this position and I've talked about this position a lot before, and you can just tell. I wonder who the players are. Okay, 24. Yeah, I know, I know this player. She, she's, a, she's a good player. Um, okay, interesting. Let's go back and wait for the next game. Only three more to go. Can we get three out of three? What do we do if we get three out of three? Are we, are we on seven and a half? Seven and a half. Any of you guys going to sub? You know, if, if I get to seven and a half, are you going to show some love? Are you going to, you know, maybe give me a little cheer? maybe buy a chess ball course maybe subscribe to g chess give a bit of love any love coming my way no getting no love today nothing g chess sub okay if we get three out of three g chess sub you only you can only you know if you want to just get it for one month it's only 9.99 dollars it's a bargain tool of the century 
bottle of Jameson Black Barrel. How are you going to give that to me now? I, I, I might need it after the next game, but how are you going to give that to me? Um, do, 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 do. Oh, look at that. We have someone after my begging. Zitgist4200 who has given uh, a sub. Oh, look at that. How generous are you? Thank you, sir. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really want to beg, but it's very, very kind of you. And Lee, Lean Horn as well. Ah, oh, very nice. So, um, begging does work. <laughs> we are actually going to bring in a, a lifetime G Chess sub option in the next week or so, and we're actually going to give another. Um, if you know anything about G Chess, another access where you get access to everything all of these tools but i'm not going to bore you with that now come on let's play another game of chess where this break after round eight come on just do it just do it come on just play let's play who is this guy who's there's an fm leading have we only played i think we played eight rounds let's see if we can reload i'll probably find i've defaulted another game now you know timed out okay so grandilius I like Grandilius. He's a he's a really nice guy, Niels. He doesn't he doesn't really stream, but he is uh, up there in equal first. Well done, Grandilius. Okay, we're in with a game, and he's got a little ghost figure there. How do you get a little ghost figure? That's quite cool. And we're either gonna have. I hope we get another black lion. Okay, should we should we mix it up with some other opening? No, we'll stick we'll stick with a Dutch. No, we won't. We go. We we'll do this one. Being a little bit, and now we go here, and we actually get a modern Benoni. I just want a sort of different opening, and it's a modern Benoni with these two moves injected. And I've always thought that B6 should be more useful than A3, and I don't know the theory so much in the modern Benoni, but one thing I do know is that it's a really um, <coughs> exciting opening. So I, it gets very, very tactical. Now, can I go B5? First tactical idea um, in this position with some idea. I'm going to I'm going to play this. This is the kind of move you always try to play in the modern Benoni. And the point being, there might be a queen a5 check if he grabs that pawn. And otherwise, I'm going to try to gain this typical space over here with something like C4. Um, so maybe maybe this move is playable otherwise okay so now i'm hoping maybe i should have maybe i should have just taken that knight and then gone knight d7 that might have made more sense i'm hoping though that this is uh some chances even even if i lose the pawn and try to get play here it's just my bishop is not very well placed here this bishop is really kind of in the way i want to get the knight to this square so he's thinking about b4 here, which I have to admit I did miss. Or this one as well, which I also missed. So this check, this check wasn't good. I needed to take that knight off. Okay, but this is still this is still quite a typical idea. You you often give up this pawn to unbalance the position and to gain some some pressure over here. So it, it might not be might not be a terrible sacrificial idea. Okay, now castling or do we come straight in here do i have to worry about a5 maybe let's castle i don't mind losing this pawn as well we're going for quick development a5 can i, I why am i trying to sack my queen am i that mad probably probably that mad if i was him i'd go a5 because he knows if he knows me he knows that i will probably sack my queen even though it's prob oh he's played it oh no I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to do that. Now, if I sack my queen, is this a load of baloney? He's got knight e2, and it kind of looks a bit baloney-ish, doesn't it? I can't sack it, can I? I really want to sack it, but I just can't. Can I? Can I sack it? I don't think I can. Takes, takes, takes. Knight e2. I don't see any any play there. He's going to castle next move. If I stopped in castling, I would, but I can't sack it. I can't do it. Why? Well, no, no, no. We can't do it. No, we can't do it. It's a little bit too much, even for me. We have to just come here. 
I like the way everyone's going, no, 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 don't do it. Okay, but now, now this is just incredibly complex, yeah? The good thing about these positions is it takes him two moves to castle, right? And I'm already castled, so material I don't think matters, but it depends if he can consolidate this structure with some sensible moves. And uh, I forgot he has knight c4, which is really annoying actually and that might just stop any anything queen here i just just forgot the knight comes back uh okay but we can we can play we have to play this no no choice in the matter and we can now at least have a threat of doing something in the middle uh but this opening again, if I'd have done, I, I would have got rid of this bishop. My bishop was was the problem piece. Now I can go knight here and just flick that one in, but I'm still thinking of ways we can stop him castling. Rook e8, take here. Okay, it's a good square for the rook. And maybe I can take here, given the right chance as well. Uh, Uh, yeah okay so you come up here that makes sense very tactical position this and I don't want to come back but I can see some possibilities of that I think we come forwards and we still keep this idea up I now have the c6 square but he has this ginormous pawn okay now we're not worried about pieces it's too late to worry about that we've got to go for development so i'm going to go here and if he takes my knight well i get some play here with my knight coming into d4 so i'm going with instinct here my instinct tells me this this should be compensation check let's bring it in um to to the battle and now i've got a problem is it's one of those positions that's just so fascinating i'd like more time uh but i don't have that luxury of more time here i'm just trying to you know keep the pressure on for the time being uh yeah he goes here that's the move I assumed he would play and do we have to now try and switch this way try to get around the back somehow let's keep that keep that in the, the position now rook here doesn't work at the moment uh, phew, time is so annoying and such an interesting position here also his knight is obviously covering that one but okay we have to go he's trying to get out of dodge but he's, he's still got his rook in the middle that's an annoying move um, Is this just absolute nonsense or not? He's playing it well so far, but he, he has let's keep keep up some some of this pressure. Fuck it. Oh, he's got me. He's got me. Yeah. Okay. So it didn't quite. Oh, hello. I'm sort of like completely lost but it's kind of like not as lost as it it was lost <laughs> if you know what I mean it's completely lost actually we'll talk about it. completely lost oh I should have just like Oh, there we go. It was completely lost. The sacrifice wasn't quite working, was it? Getting a bit carried away there. Should we just check? I'm going to check it and just see if there's any. I'm going to. I, I think we're not. We'll, 
Wow, how many more games have we got to go? Is there two more games? I think that's me done, guys. Um, we've had nine rounds. That's that's good enough for me. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to finish off the tournament, but you know we've had some interesting games. There's a lot of stuff to do, and um, it's not working today. We will have a good title Tuesday one day. One day we wait. One day we will. So I'm gonna I'm gonna withdraw. It's not gonna cause anyone any harm. It doesn't matter in a tournament like this whether you withdraw or not. But let's. I just want to before I go. I do want to review that game. So it looked actually. Oh, okay. So this was a big blunder. Why was this a big blunder? Why was this move a big blunder? Don't say I could have sat my queen now. If it says that I should have sat my queen now. I'm going to be like, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? I can go queen a6. Oh, of course. Why didn't I play queen a6? With this eye, just because he can't move his knight because of this. Ah, oh, it makes so much sense, right? Just go here. Yeah, it's so easy afterwards. Let's also go back to this position. So we give up the pawn. In actual fact, this queen a5 is just a bad move. And what I should have done was just taken this one and then played knight here. And this is much more uh, logical compensation here. I'm threatening queen a5 to win his bishop. I can get the rook um, to b8. Uh, I'm quick to castle and I have some ideas here. This actually looks like really good compensation for the pawn. So it kind of shows a little bit of lack of understanding of these positions that after this one well I kind of meant to take here but then I then I then I flick this check in first peculiar and I guess the Queen's sacrifice later on was probably oh well hang on a minute it's not so bad so around about here is the Queen's sacrifice so terrible so this was the peace sacrifice so he took here and it does say he's winning now so it should it probably is bad it looked like I was getting some play, but it's not quite good enough because I can't break through uh, the bishop. Uh, Liam MC saying, Gwen beat Nepo and Fabi. Really? That's phenomenal if he did. Let's just have a look at that. Let's go back to the tournament and just see if, uh, if that's the case. So I don't know how to look at his games now. No, I, okay, let's look. We can have a look on G Chess. What's his, what's his handle? Verdnort or something let's have a look at those games so another okay i want to see him beat so we go to the opening um we go to this one my games we click on the my games tab and we put in his uh it might take a long time to do this because he's a new he's new to the system so let's just change this and how do you spell quite okay there you spell so it might take a, a long time because whenever you do the first search of someone you have to get them in the system so this could take a little bit too long, but we we'll just see if it if okay that maybe didn't take so long. Is this is this today? This is last week his game. So let's see if we can uh, refresh. So I can look at okay. Well here we go. It is. He did beat Fabiano. Look at this. And he did beat and he did beat MV. This I mean. He beat Nepo and Fabiano. So he beat two World Championship qualifiers. This is amazing. So this is Gwen Jones of England. Let's just see how he beat Nepo. So there's Gwen and there's Jan. And let's just have a quick look at this game, shall we? So it's quite a nice way that you can look at games of other players as well that we've created here. Well done, Gwen. That's really impressive. Beating two World Championship finalists. That is phenomenal. Let's just see how he won. Well done, Gwen. So this all seems, I guess, fairly normal, right? He did He did hear what it took Magnus a while to do. This is all pretty normal. He's got quite a nice position. Playing some nice moves. Very nice, yeah. He's positionally outplaying Jan. He breaks in the center. He's got two bishops. He wins the pawn. He just wins very easily, right? He wins very nicely here. Look at this. And he wins this ending. Well done, Gwen. So that's Gwen beating Nepo. Brilliant result.
And let's see how he beat Fabiano. Fabiano with the black pieces as well. Wow. Gwaine Jones, you hero. Okay, so how do you beat Fabi with the black pieces? Well, he plays the King's Indian defense. And he's an expert on the King's Indian. Very symmetrical position. This is all very normal so far. And probably I prefer white a little bit here if anyone, but very, very normal. Okay, he gets his knight in, good move. This is getting a little bit complicated now. Still looks okay for Gawain, rook d8. Nice maneuver that one, trying to get the knight to a better route and to attack d4, okay. Pushing that knight away. Very nice, the knight does this lovely maneuver. He's got the two bishops, he's got this nice pass pawn here. Fabiano tries to bring the pawn back, but now Gwen attacks another area of the board, increases the pressure. He's winning a pawn here, and he's now a clear pawn up. Very nice game from Gawain. And he gets his rook in, brilliant stuff. Looks still quite scary, this to me. And he's coming around the king's side. Oh, look at that. What a greedy little pawn grab. Boom. Thank you very much, Fabiano. Mr. World Championship Fabiano. What, what, what brilliant games by Gwaine. Gwaine Jones. Um, beating, oh, that's incredible, beating two world champion finalists in, in one tournament and, and outplaying both of them. Well done, Gwen. That is really impressive. Great to see Gwen. He's a lovely, lovely guy. Uh, do that. And um, yeah, you can see here that, uh, you know, if you ever want to search someone, then it's quite a good little tool this you can you know you can look at their online games and you just put their handle in and it works very well but well he certainly did it better than me didn't he <laughs> um hopefully I, i'm gonna I, I could blame my uh um my playing a lot of things but I'm, I'm not going to just wasn't quite with it today but thank you all for watching and still had some exciting games there let's uh try to find someone to raid now shall we who who are we gonna who are we gonna raid um who is in the house that we should raid any suggestions who we can give a little raid over to well we could do horsey chess an english let's do that an english streamer who often does stuff with Danny Gormali. Uh, I don't know who else is on online at the moment. And I think we'll do that. Thank you all, by the way, for coming along today, for uh, watching the stream. Again, not, not being particularly successful with these title Tuesdays. I'm gonna blame it on round two. Let's blame it on loads of things. Round two, as in, uh, put me off kilter that's my excuse it's good to have excuses in life excuses excuses work wonders um and we're gonna raid an english streamer um who needs more views so let's do that now and um like i said i've got quite a lot of work on at the moment but i'm gonna be putting stuff up on my youtube channel so just keep an eye on youtube and make sure you subscribe there and if you're not following this channel be very grateful if you could follow this channel. Cheers for now. Bye.